next few tutorials we're going to start looking at the editing tools that we have basically these editing tools that we have for editing clips in the timeline and then after that we're going to look how we can edit using keyboard shortcuts in the timeline as opposed to using the mouse but to start off with we'll look at the individual tools and see how we can edit in the timeline we've already set in and out points either in the project panel or in the source monitor but now we want to get in there and do a bit more editing so that things look even better now firstly how do I get to my edit points it, please notice at the moment I still have video 3 and audio 3 selected and if I use the up and down arrows on my keyboard and if I do the up arrow I get to the previous edit point and if I do the down arrow I get to the next edit point however if I want to carry on going backwards if I do the up arrow to get to the previous edit point and carry on hitting it I don't get to any of my previous edits because it's looking at the targeted track so if I want to get to another edit point if I hold the shift key and do the up arrow it's going to take me to the next edit point regardless of what layer that might actually be on okay so if you want to go backwards and forwards it's the up and down arrows but it'll only respect the actual layer that you're on while you're not holding the shift key but when you hold the shift key you can then get to any edit point on your timeline okay so that's just a quick way of getting to and from your different timeline bits and pieces now the first tool is actually the one that you'll probably not use a great deal in reality it's called the trim tool and it's actually found with the selection tool now the keyboard shortcut for the selection tool is V and if we go into our timeline I'm just going to zoom in a bit so we can see a little bit more clearly what's going on and I hover over the end of a clip so I'm at the end of the clip I'm not over the next clip I'm at the end of the clip I get this really nice icon that tells me that I can trim the clip backwards in the direction of the arrow so if I click and hold and pull I can trim the clip back and I've actually lost footage I've trimmed it back to wherever I want it to be but I do end up with this gap we can deal with the gap but let's just look at it from the other direction I can still trim it I can still go backwards add more in and take more away this is just a dynamic trimming tool and if I go to this clip here and click on it you'll see that I get the arrow facing the other way telling me I can take bits and pieces off the next clip but I still end up with this gap now if you've got a gap like this and you want to fill that gap in you can right click on it and do ripple delete or you can select the gap and hit shift delete do the same thing so we can ripple delete to get rid of this space that's created but as I say what we really want to do is not leave any spaces in the first place so although the trim tool is great for actually trimming clips backwards and forwards this space this gap is a problem for us just going to control Z a couple of times to get us back to where we were there we go so that's the trim tool the one that we really want to use is this one here called the ripple edit tool and the keyboard shortcut is B if I click on that I get a new icon the icon showing me two-way arrows but I've got a line through it at the moment because it's not active until I select a clip so let's select the seabirds one that we're looking at, at the moment select it and then when I go over the edit point I get this little yellow trim tool with an arrow facing one direction but notice what happens when I trim using this ripple edit tool as I pull it back I get feedback in the monitor above and what it's saying is here on the left is your present out point or the end of your first clip and on the right is showing me the in point of the next clip and what I'm doing is if I pull it back I'm taking more and more footage off the birds whereas I'm not affecting the boys at all but when I let go look what happens I've got rid of the gap it instantly ripples it without me having to do anything now if I want to ripple some off the kids here so this this clip here if I click on that clip and go to the end again I get the yellow tool and as I start to pull across you'll see that the left hand side of the monitor is saying we're not changing the end of the first clip but we are changing the beginning of the next clip and I can go backwards and forwards until I get to the right place but also notice I can actually go negative what's going on here I'm actually pulling back I'm going to be adding footage into my timeline so the total timeline length will increase 
It looks like I'm eating into the birds, but I'm not. The monitor's telling me that the out point from the birds, or the end of that clip, will stay the same. I'm actually bringing more footage in from the boys. So I'm going to take it to there, and when I let go, you'll actually see that there's the end of the bird, same place, and we've got the beginning of that wave coming in, causing the boys to run back. So by using the Ripple Edit tool, I was actually bringing more footage in, as well as, if I want to, trim more footage out, and when I let go, all gaps are gone. So that's a really important tool, the Ripple Edit tool. And the last tool to show you for this particular section is this one here, which is called the Rolling Edit tool, keyboard shortcut N. And if I take the Rolling Edit tool, again, you'll see I get a different type of icon with an arrow through it until, that is, I click on some clips, and then I get the Rolling Edit tool. And when I click between a clip, it's showing me that both clips are selected, or the end of one and the beginning of the next is selected, and when I drag it one way or the other, I start to get feedback in my monitor above. And what it's saying is, the new out point, or the new end of the first clip is on the left, so that's where the birds ends, and the new in point for the next clip, where the boys are running back from the wave, starts. And I can change exactly where that is. So I want to take it back to perhaps where the seagull's head is just up there, will be my new in point. So it'll be a bit longer before the boys start to run back from the wave. And when I let go, that point has now moved. And you'll see that the end point of the birds is where the seagull looks up. And we go into the boys, and that wave is arriving, causing them to run backwards. So I am rolling this clip backwards and forwards. And as long as there is head footage and tail footage, you can carry on going. But there will come a point when Premiere Pro will not let you go any further. So those are your three tools we're doing at the moment. The Trim tool, which just trims an item back, but leaves a space. Control-Z. The Ripple Edit tool, which is yellow and adds or takes away footage, but always clears the gap at the end. And then the Rolling Edit tool, which when you select it and you click over an edit point, will edit where one clip ends and where the next clip starts, just by rolling it backwards and forwards, as long as you've got head and tail footage for all of these. In the next tutorial, we'll start looking at some of the other tools.